What's up, everybody? Happy Monday morning. Or is it happy Monday morning? Doomsday. For most fans in their head, thinking that their football team is about to lose a bunch of players to the transfer board. And really, the season of, of, of high-caliber football players is pretty much over, right? Bowl season. What do you get out of bowl season? I hear a lot of people say, well, bowls don't mean anything anymore. Well, it does to some players. Uh, think about the kids that are playing on these football teams that invested four years of playing on a football team that is not going to the NFL. Uh, the vast majority of college football players aren't going to the NFL, y'all. Look up the percentages of the guys that's in college that make it to the NFL. So do these bowl games mean something to those kids? Absolutely it does. Does the bowl games mean something to your young kids, your freshmen, your redshirt freshmen, uh, guys that need more practice and gain more experience? Would you rather be sitting at home right now without a bowl game to look forward to, without practices that you uh, use towards next year? Uh, bowl games have kind of just turned into a preseason game. You kind of see what you're going to have next year. Uh, most guys declare for the draft prior to bowl games anyway. And with this 30-day period, most guys will be in the transfer portal. I'm sure a lot of guys may play in bowl games and then decide to transfer. But anyway, bowl games do mean something to certain people. Not not the normal, typical fan that just wants to sit and watch a good football game. Uh, they just, you know, I enjoy watching bowl games myself. I do. I enjoy watching some teams I normally probably don't get to see on a Saturday, right? You're competing with SEC football. You're competing with Big Ten football. A lot of teams, uh, the, the lower levels, the, the group of fives, a lot of these smaller teams didn't even need the income from a bowl game to help their programs. Um, the kids get to go out and enjoy cities and they get, you know, some gifts and stuff. Not every guy has some big NIL deal. Not every player gets that, man. Not every player is going to the NFL. It, it's just bowl games mean something to players that know that this is it. When you graduate, you got your education, right? That, that's wonderful. But you're going to play your last football game. You know, I'm sure there are some guys, South Carolina's had this in their past too, run off to the Canadian Football League, or now you have the XFL, maybe some guys go over there, or whatever, some of these other football leagues. But for the vast majority of these kids, these seniors, this is their last football game of their career. And I don't know if a lot of us sit back and think that when the last time we played our football game, whether it was high school or even some of the guys that went to college that played at some of these small, small schools. But man, that, that kind of hits you when they're, you're no longer doing it anymore, right? So I, I get a lot of people say, well, it's just the shit bowl or the, the toilet bowl or this bowl is meaningless it don't mean shit it does to some kids uh, or some of these players it's going to be the last time you get to go out on the field with your helmet and pads on and play a football game so it does mean something to, to, to people I mean if you're a parent and you're watching your kid play his last collegiate football game in a bowl game <coughs> it means something to you right um, that's just my kind of side of, of, of the bowl game season because this is when it starts. No one, no, no one plays in the don't give a fuck. Bowl. I think that's worth it. But it's doomsday for a lot of people. A lot of panic is going to go in today with a lot of uh, fan bases, including probably South Carolina. You're going to hit probably 20, 25 people. It was announced with Taka Hemingway's coming back. That's good for South Carolina. We all love Taka. Taka's he's our Taka truck. Uh, Juice Wells, of course, we already knew. He was announced. He was leaving. He's going somewhere else. I did notice in his little thing that he put down, he's leaving with two years of eligibility left. Does anyone in their right mind take that kid on on an NIL deal on a football team that thinks he's going to be around in two years and not go to the NFL? He would have to have one bad year this year, upcoming year, no matter what team he's on. If you think you're getting that, Juice Wells is coming there for two years. You just saw what he did to South Carolina. Okay. People are going to take him. He's a talented football player. South Carolina took a chance on him when he came from James Madison. Not knocking the kid that he didn't get out and work for. But he was a flyer from a James Madison. 
South Carolina went out there, took Justin Stepp worked with him, made him a better football player. And, uh, you know, he had one hell of a, a season in 22. Got hurt, didn't play 23. And understand that. Get out, work, get yourself back, come back and play. Uh, but you want to boat, boat. There's other kids out there that's looking for that opportunity that will uh, fill your position. Don't worry about it. South Carolina's an SEC Power 5 school. Somebody's coming. Anyway, it's going to be interesting today to see who all leaves, who all stays on all these football teams. Who's back next year? We know there's already some quarterbacks back in the transfer portal that just transferred. DJ Ukulele Man, uh, Drew Pine. Uh, there's a there's a list of quarterbacks that are back in the transfer portal after transferring already. Uh, in a grad transfer, I mean, unless your team's really in bad shape, let, let's look at playoff teams and let's look at how many guys are transferred and how many of these guys have developed through recruiting. I know Michigan's probably got some transfers. I've had to go through their thing, but realistically, if you think about the vast majority of their players that are playing in this playoff. They're recruited players. They still built that football team. They didn't build that football team from the transfer. Texas, they do have some transfer players. Quinn Ewers is one of them, right? Quinn Ewers came in, had high-profile uh, quarterback that went to Ohio State, transferred back home to the state of Texas, and uh, has done well there. But when he came back, he, it's not like he was a polished quarterback, right? This Quinn Ewers was not a polished quarterback when he transferred back to Texas. Some people would argue that with me. You can do whatever you want to, but he wasn't the starter at Ohio State. Um, but the vast majority of that Texas team is built. Uh, who else? Alabama. Alabama may have a transfer here or there, a couple guys there, but the vast majority of their star players are in-house built football players, developed football players from high school. Right, so people argue to transfer, and you can. You got you see Florida State. They they came in, took on a bunch of transfers, played well. Um, there's still the opinion of whether they should be in the playoffs or not. I'm not going to sit here and argue either way for either. You could argue for both. You could debate Alabama, Florida State all day long. Hell, you could debate anybody getting in. Right? You could debate Texas being in if you really wanted to. Um, I'll even hear people arguing for Michigan. Well, Michigan shouldn't have made it because they didn't look impressive this year. I don't think there's a team out there that looked impressive in every football game they played this year. Every team's had some struggles through some football games. Uh, maybe some final scores look better than they really were. But late, late scores and stuff like that kind of beefed up some of the final scores. Everybody looks at Alabama and they're still thinking of the USF thing. Well, they really struggle with USF. You know, everybody struggled with a team. And traveling to Tampa, Florida to play a football team, yeah, they, you got to use that as a learning moment, I guess. Uh, why Alabama would even travel to a USF? Got to ask that question, too. Makes no sense to me. But they did what they did, and I don't make their schedule. Uh, I mean, I, it, it, it really, it, you could argue Washington. Oh, I, Washington's best wins was two wins against the same football team, and they beat them by three both times. If you wanted to sit down and really go through the crowd and argue about it, I mean, just think, you couldn't take five YouTubers and put them in a room and agree upon who the hell the Final Four should be, let alone taking a large group of people. So what you say, they make a criteria. Well, they don't ever stick to their criteria. Well... Maybe not. Maybe so. I'm going to read through the new criteria of what they're doing for this 12-team playoff. See if it Because it's not going to resemble the 14. There's always been a debate on whether a team should get in. And everybody says, well, it's SEC bias. It's this, that, and the other. Yes, we are at Disney. No, no, it's not. If that was the case, then Michigan wouldn't be number one. Michigan plays on the big, in the Big Ten. They're a Fox affiliated conference. What does ESPN and Disney have anything to do with Michigan? They really don't. I mean, they would, they'll have them in the playoffs, but the vast majority of Michigan's games are played on Fox. But 
you know, like I said, everything can be debated. Everyone's got an issue with something. Doom and gloom day to day when it comes to transfers. Everybody's team's going to fall apart right now. But over the next month, when these when other kids start coming into your school or, or decide to transfer to your school, then you're going to be the happiest person. Because here's always been an argument, too. Well, you're pissed at the kids that go in the transfer portal, but you're excited about the kids that come from the transfer portal. Can't have it both ways. There's no such thing as having it both ways. Oh, I can't believe he's not dedicated to my school anymore. These kids don't love your school. Think about the vast majority of players that are on your football team. I bet it's a very small percentage of players on your football team that grew up a fan of your football team. And now that national recruiting is out there and all these players come from all over the world, uh, anywhere from California, Arizona, who knows where they get them all from, they didn't grow up a Georgia Bulldog fan. They didn't grow up a South Carolina Gamecock fan. They're there because they believe in the coaches and they like the school. And they're not fans like us. So you can get over your little fan pride and realize that these kids don't care, man. They want to go play football. And the kids that are transferring out of South Carolina that haven't really played, the Kylie Hortons of the world, can you really blame them? Omega Blake, great football player, wish the kid would have stayed. Didn't get a lot of playing time in South Carolina, probably looking at the wide receiver room, looking, you got Nick Harbour sitting there. Uh, Tyshawn Russell will play quite a bit this year. I mean, he needs to work on his drops, but uh, who else is South Carolina bringing? There's so many conversations that's going on behind closed doors when it comes to coaching and recruiting and players. And, and, and I did. I mean, we have no clue who's interested in your program. I know there's some wide receivers coming to visit at South Carolina. Uh, Don Chaney Jr. Uh, was supposedly visiting South Carolina. I don't know if that's been officially said he was there. Well, I don't think he can come to this week because you can't announce until today unless you're a grad transfer, right? Or one of the smaller. But there's visitors coming into South Carolina. If you land, Do you land them? You don't know. You bring recruits in all the time for visits. You don't land every recruit you bring in for a visit. That's a fact. Um, what do you look for? I'm not a big fan of grad transfers coming in unless, I mean, you're just in really bad shape. Like the quarterback room right now in South Carolina is not in good shape. Uh, I'm not talking about Lenore Sellers. I think Lenore Sellers is going to be a really good quarterback at uh, the University of South Carolina. I'm talking about the overall picture of what we have in our quarterback room right now is Luke Doty. And basically, Lenore Sellers are the two guys that have any quarterback play in their past. So, who, who else is out there? I mean, you're going to see it everywhere. Everywhere. Except for these these teams that have kids that are going to play in this playoffs, those guys are probably sticking. You unless they're really not playing, you're not going to see those kids hit the transfer. You only have 30 days. It starts today. So, by the time the national championship game is played, whoever that may be, those kids are probably not going to be moving anywhere. Now. After spring ball, if they're a returning player, transfer portal opens back up for 15 days, you'll probably see a lot of the kids off of the better teams that didn't get playing time transfer out. But it's going to be a fun day today. Everyone's going to be on Twitter just, you know, reloading, 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 reloading to see who's leaving your favorite football team, uh, if there's any noise of where they're going. I mean, I don't I don't know. you got to say it's damn near, it's got to be straight up tampering if you're if your player goes into the transfer portal today and announces today where the hell he's going, then you know there's tampering in there and conversations already been had. And uh, NCAA really needs to look at that kind of stuff. But what do they do? They've tied their hands so bad with anything. They don't have any teeth anymore. They can't really do anything. Uh, dig through to try. Even if they figure it out, they ain't going to figure it out for three years to do anything. So I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Transfer portal, hey, you're going to lose some players that you really don't want to lose, that you put your uh, 
heart into. But stop putting your heart into these football players. Put heart into your program. That's all you can really do. I mean, it is what it is, right? The world still moves. We still got to pay bills and taxes. Anyway, Rooster Man, get out of here. Tonight, 8 o'clock, right here on the Twisted Tailgate channel, we'll talk about a lot of this stuff. We're going to talk about the, the playoffs, the right, wrong, indifferent. Uh, get some opinions. I mean, you're going to have the heated people on both sides. Feel bad for Florida State. Not making it, and then again, I don't because they stole two players from us last year. So, uh, personal opinion, uh, I didn't want to see Jaheim Bell or, or Gilbert Edmund make it to the playoffs. And, and honestly, if I, you look at me, uh, look at the resume, <sighs> Florida State three point win with a backup quarterback over Louisville that lost to Pitt, shit Pitt, and uh, Kentucky. If you're losing those type, I mean, Florida State beat a crap Louisville football team. I mean, I don't know where else. That Louisville hurt Florida State's uh, strength of schedule. They did. And people can look at it and say, well, hey, well what about uh, only loss Alabama told it was the Texas. Texas is in the playoffs. Oh, Florida State didn't lose. Nope. They didn't beat nobody either. Anyway, all these other teams losing hurt your strength. Yeah, it does. Uh, LSU not finishing their season out the way everyone predicted LSU to be like a 10-win team, and they weren't. Everyone predicted Clemson to be a 10-win team, and they weren't. Um, so all the opportunity that Florida State had to really have a good, strong uh, strength of schedule, other teams kind of let them down in that, you know. Ain't Florida State's fault they couldn't, didn't go out and uh, they did what they were supposed to do. They won their football games. But I don't know. I'm not on the committee. I can't tell you the conversations. I don't know what happened and all that. But like I said, it's going to be a fun day today watching recruiting. Please show up tonight. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, uh, and share the videos, man. It helps grow the little channel I got going. Uh, still gaining subscribers. Uh, football season's down to bowl season and championship games. So it's going to be spread out over the month. Uh, and we're just going to keep an eye on transfers and who goes where and who gets in. It's going to be a fun month. Uh, we got National Signing Day coming with the high school kids. Who signs, who flips. I already seen a couple of those here recently of some uh, big-time recruits flipping to other football teams. But we're here to talk about it all. So... Rich man got to get out of here. Peace. Holler at you later.